Good morning, and welcome to Morning Prayer for Tuesday, June 16th. Both here and in all your churches throughout the world, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Amen. Day 16, the first way of service continued. Tertiaries recognize the power of intercessorial prayer for furthering the purposes of God's kingdom and therefore seek a deepening communion with God in personal devotion and constantly intercede for the needs of his church and his world. Those of us who have much time at their disposal give prayer a large part in their daily lives. Those of us with less time must not fail to see the importance of prayer and to guard the time we have allotted to it from interruption. Lastly, we are encouraged to avail ourselves of the sacrament of reconciliation through which the burden of past sin and failure is lifted and peace and hope restored. O oh God, you resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Help us not to think proudly, but to serve you with humility that pleases you, so we may walk in the steps of your servant Francis and receive the gift of your grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. God rules over all the earth. O come, let us worship. The Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm appointed for this morning is the first part of Psalm 78. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments and not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with the bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers in the land of Egypt and in the fields of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the water stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the, wil in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They tested God in their hearts, demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, Can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, the waters gushed out, and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob, and his anger mounted against Israel. For they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. 
So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heaven and let out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. But they did not stop craving, though the food was still in their mouths. So God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they went on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock that, and the Most High God their Redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast towards him and they were not faithful in his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not permit his wrath to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As they were gathering in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into, the, into human hands, and they will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised. And they were greatly distressed. When they reached Capernaum, the collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? He said, Yes, he does. And when he came home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, What do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take toil or tribute? From their children or from others? When Peter said, From others, Jesus said to him, Then the children are free. However, we do not give offense to them, Go to the sea and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them for you and me. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we stand in God's presence, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the church throughout the world. We pray as it finds both new and old ways of proclaiming the gospel, of making disciples, of showing people God's kingdom. We pray for the Anglican Communion throughout the world, the Anglican Church of Canada, the Diocese of Brandon, in this parish of St. Matthew's. We pray for our church leadership, for Bishop William, our assisting Bishop Larry, 
our Metropolitan Greg, our National Indigenous Archbishop Mark, our Primate Linda, and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them true knowledge of himself, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for this community. We pray for those close to us. We pray for their protection, for their health. We pray for satisfaction in, in the lives of those close to us, that they will get a sense of true joy and happiness, that they will sense that you are their God and that we are your children. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all they do, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are struggling today. We pray for those who have been afflicted with COVID-19. For anyone in our hospital or our nursing homes. For those awaiting surgery, recovering from it, or suffering from other long-term health issues, mental health issues, addictions, isolation, poverty, or homelessness. We pray for those in our community who will be hungry this day, who are unsure of where their daily bread will come from, where their food will come tomorrow. We pray for those who are treated as outcasts or outsiders, those who are seen as the other, those who because of the color of their skin are treated differently. We pray for those who are invisible, who believe that they are not important or do not matter, those who feel that no one cares. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for this country. We pray for our Governor General, our Prime Minister, our members of Parliament, our Premier, our members of the Legislature, and our Mayor and Council. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the world. Most especially this day, we pray for those places where people suffer because of warfare, famine, disease, man-made or natural disasters, injustice, racism, or oppression. We pray for Yemen, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq and Iran, Sudan, Turkey, Palestine, Israel, North and South Korea, Russia, the Ukraine, and the United States. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In our prayers for the Third Order, we pray today for the African province, for Cape Town, Port Elizabeth and Lesotho, and for Nadine, Tanya, Judith, Reuben, Averio, Lucy, Charlie, Dennis, Laurel, Ed, Herbert, Roy, Vanessa, Niambi, Jorge, Peter, and David. God, we give you thanks for the Third Order of the Society of St. Francis. 
Grant, we pray, that being knit together in community and prayer, we, your servants, may glorify your holy name after the example of St. Francis and win others to your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, without you, we are not able to please you. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May our blessed lady pray for us. May St. Francis pray for us. May St. Clair pray for us. May all the saints of the Third Order pray for us. May all the holy angels watch over us and befriend us. May the Lord Jesus give us his blessing and his peace. Amen.